Please be seated. Welcome to today's commencement ceremony. The University of Denver Sturm College of Law is proud to honor our graduates and to welcome you into our alumni community. For over a century, the College of Law has educated lawyers who have gone on to rewarding careers. We are proud of you and of the contributions you will make to the legal profession. Congratulations on your achievement, and welcome to all of our honored guests and faculty who are here with us today. I am pleased to introduce Amy Weichel for the singing of our national anthem. Amy graduated magna cum laude from Arizona State University with a BA in psychology. After graduation, she joined the Up With People organization and shared her musical talents around the world while encouraging global responsibility and leadership through song. In 2008, she graduated from the Sturm College of Law with her Juris Doctor. Amy received the Outstanding Student Award for the Criminal Clinic of the Student Law Office here at the College of Law. 
She is currently a solo practitioner, but will start a new position as a Colorado public defender in June. Please welcome Amy Weigel. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the rest? parts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Last week, we lost a beloved colleague, teacher, and friend to a tragic bicycle accident. Assistant Professor Eric Blumel joined our faculty last fall. During this past year, he made a deep and lasting impact on all of the DU Law community, including the students he cared so passionately about. Many of Eric's students are wearing a pin in honor of his memory. Please join me in a moment of silence as we remember and honor Assistant Professor Eric Blumel. Thank you. We have a very special group of alumni with us today. I would like to welcome our golden barristers who graduated from the College of Law more than 50 years ago. We are delighted to have them with us today. And I can personally assure you they have not slowed down one bit. Uh, it is a pleasure to have Mr. John Lowe, a 1951 graduate of the College of Law, return to the law school. Mr. Lowe has been a member of the DU Board of Trustees since 1987 and is a partner in the firm of Sherman and Howard, where he has practiced law since 1951. Mr. Lowe received the Outstanding Alumni Award in 1994. I am deeply honored to introduce John Lowe. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you who have uh, joined us for this happy occasion. We are proud of our graduates, the quality of our faculty, and the education that the University of Denver Sturm College of Law provides our students. On behalf of my fellow trustees, I especially want to welcome members of the families of our graduates who, through their support, encouragement, and in many cases, their sacrifices have helped make this day possible. We congratulate the candidates whose years of diligent effort is celebrated today. We wish each of you 
success as you pursue your chosen field. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. John Leopold. Mr. Leopold is an alumnus of the University of Denver Sturm College of Law, where he received his JD in 1974. He served as a district court judge in Colorado's 18th Judicial District for a period of 19 years, and as chief judge of that district for four years prior to his retirement. John currently works as an arbitrator and mediator for JAMS Denver. Please welcome Judge John Leopold. Good morning, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to represent the Sturm College of Law Alumni Council today. I am pleased to represent 12,000 living alumni of the University of Denver Sturm College of Law in welcoming our newest alumni, the great class of 2009. As your first official act as a University of Denver Sturm College of Law alumni, I will soon ask you to join me in pinning the University of Denver alumni lapel pin on a fellow classmate. With this DU alumni pin, you are now recognized as part of the DU alumni community. You cannot buy this pin. You cannot order it by mail. You must get your first pin in person from another DU graduate. I encourage you to wear your pin proudly as it identifies you as a representative of this great university. Will all graduates please rise? Our 2008-2009 student speaker, Trey Baker, represents all of you who are graduating here today. If you would now please take a moment to pin one another with a DU alumni lapel pin. Congratulations to the class of 2009. And welcome to your elite status as alumni of the University of Denver Sturm College of Law. For my final comment, I add this injunction. Go forth and pass the bar examination. Please be seated. Thank you, John. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker. Representative Terrence D. Carroll is the 34th speaker of the Colorado House of Representatives. He is the first African American in that top leadership role. Speaker Carroll's first elective office was his current seat in the 65-member chamber, where he has served since 2003. He represents House District 7, an area that encompasses Northeast Denver. During the 2008 session, he served as Assistant Majority Leader. Speaker Carroll is known as the go-to guy for writing legislation on criminal justice and legal policy. He is well known as a strong advocate for social justice and is an ardent supporter of education reform. Speaker Carroll has served as a member of the Colorado Secretary of State's Blue Ribbon Election Panel, which conducted a comprehensive review of Colorado's election law. He is a member of the Colorado Lawyers Committee's Election Law Task Force and of the Executive Council of the Minori Asui Inns of Court. He serves on the steering committee of the Denver Lawyer Chapter of the American Constitution Society. In 2006, he was named a Marshall Memorial Fellow by the German Marshall Fund of the United States 
a public policy institute dedicated to promoting greater understanding between the United States and Europe. Speaker Carroll graduated in 1992 with honors from Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia, receiving a Bachelor of Arts degree in political science. He earned a Master of Divinity degree from the Islip School of Theology in Denver in 1999, as well as his Juris Doctor degree from the University of Denver Sturm College of Law. Speaker Carroll is also a graduate of the Summer Leadership Institute at Harvard University Divinity School's Center for the Study of Values in Public Life and John F. Kennedy School of Government. Speaker Carroll is an attorney with Greenberg Traurig, as well as an adorned, uh, uh, ordained minister. We are honored and delighted to welcome Terrence Carroll to today's ceremony. Thank you very much, Dean and Chancellor Coombe, and congratulations, graduates of the College of Law. Every time that I hear someone give my um, introduction, I feel like I'm here in my own obituary. <laughs> I feel like this should be at the end of life, and when you're Speaker of the House, what adds to that feeling is if you ever go outside the main doors of the House floor, there are marble walls uh, behind in the lobby, and then carved on those marble walls, or engraved on those marble walls, are the names of every single Speaker of the House since 1876. My name is the very last name it carved into the marble with a date and then a hyphen after the date, which adds to the feeling that somehow you've passed away and, and, and moved on. Uh, but the great thing about that is that I actually see my name in marble and there's no one standing over me giving a eulogy although it does feel like that when I hear my um, introduction from time to time. Um, just not too long ago, I was sitting where you were sitting, and I remember my commencement speaker, and I remember sitting there, could you move on with it? I have a law degree to get, and I have to go study for the bar because the Barbary course starts in about a week. So I'm gonna get on with it, and despite my uh, general nature to be long-winded, which I come by naturally, because I am a preacher by calling, I'm a lawyer by training and I'm a politician by insanity, <laughs> which is the triple threat of being long-winded. But I'll try to resist that urge to be long-winded. And another thing that I'll resist is the thing that they teach you in Baptist preacher school, is that you actually have to say that you're gonna finish your sermon three times before you actually finish it. And, the perp and some of you know what I'm talking about. You've been in a Baptist church. And the reason that we do that is that when we see people, because you know in the Baptist church we talk for a long time, and so when we see people falling asleep, we say, I'm closing. They'll perk up and listen a little more, and you give another important point, then they'll start fading off again. It's like, I'm really closing this time, and, and they'll start perking up again, and then they'll fall off again, and then you say you're closing, and you really close up to the third time, and you hit them hard with your most important point. And so I'm gonna avoid that, and I'm just gonna get to the crux of the matter at hand, which is that you're going out into a world that's somewhat uncertain right now. When you look at uh, the economy and you look at all the issues that we're facing in this country with terrorism and all the issues that we're facing in this state, I just spent 120 days trying to figure out how to cut $1.5 billion from the state budget. Not the, not the pleasant, most pleasant way that you want to spend your time as Speaker of the House, especially when you only get to do it for two years and you have to go to the land of forgotten about politicians. And I'm not sure where that is, but I think it's my law firm. Uh, but, <laughs> but so it's not the best way to, to, spend, to be Speaker. But one of the things that keeps me going, even in the midst of some of the most trying circumstances that we have right now in this state and in this, and in this nation is something that I once heard Dr. King say, I didn't hear it personally, but I heard it on the tape, and he says that the true measure of a person is not where they stand in times of comfort and convenience, but where they stand in times of great challenges and controversy. There's no doubt that we stand in a time of great challenge and controversy, and each of you is gonna be tested, and your medal's gonna be tried as we, as we, as all of us as a state, as a nation, go through times of great challenge and controversy right now. And as people going out into the world to become lawyers, there's an especially a significant burden placed on each of us who at some point will stand and take the oath of admission to the bar 
to each of us who says that we want to represent people, there's a greater challenge for us in this time. And that challenge for us is to make sure that we don't separate liberty from justice, as Edmund Burke says, but that we maintain those two together. Because when we do separate liberty from justice, we put both at great risk. And I have this deep feeling in my gut that lawyers, to a certain degree, we failed our nation at times right now because we've sometimes allowed expediency to get in the middle of liberty and justice and to separate them from each other. And we have a special obligation as people who've gone to law school, who've graduated from law school, and you will pass the bar. We have a special obligation to actually stand for the Constitution, stand for freedom, stand for liberty, and stand for opportunity in times of great challenge and controversy. Because the world really does depend on us. The world really does depend on the skills and the experiences and the wisdom that we bring to the table after three, four, or five years of law school in some instances. Uh, my friend Andrew Romanoff's not here, is he? Um, <laughs> just had to check. But we bring unique skills to the table, and we have to embrace those skills and stand for the Constitution and stand for opportunity. Some people may wonder why I spend so much time talking about liberty, talking about opportunity, talking about making sure that we bring our gifts to the table. It's because of how I grew up. My mother had me when she was 51 years old. And I see some people with that look of shock on their face that often happens when I say that. Yes, she had me at 51. And when she had me, I was 10 pounds, 10 ounces. And I don't think she ever forgave me <laughs> for that. Even up to the point where she passed away, I don't think she forgave me. But I always mention that because I think that those of you who waited to have children, if my mother had me at 51, it's not too late for you. And those of you who are feeling like empty nesters, you can always go back now <laughs> and have additional children. But I mentioned that my mother had me at 51, and she never finished the third grade, and she was a sharecropper's daughter. And my grandfather was a sharecropper. My great-grandfather was a freed slave, and my great-great-grandfather was a slave. And my last name was Carol, which is the name of the plantation that my family worked on in Southern Maryland. And the owner of the plantation, the original owner, was one of the signatories of the Declaration of Independence. And I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for the fact that others fought for opportunity for me, that others fought for me to have the liberty and the freedom to even go to a law school like DU, to have attained a Master of Divinity degree, or even to go to Morehouse. So I feel a special obligation if I've been giving so much in my life, I've given so many opportunities to give back and to continue to fight on behalf of those people who may not have had the same opportunity as I have had. Each of you have had great opportunity. You've had great experiences, and I believe that those of us who've had those opportunities and those experiences owe an obligation to return back to our communities and fight for opportunity for others, fight for liberty for others, and fight for freedom for others. And I encourage you, as you leave this place, as you leave these halls, as you leave these professors, that you make a commitment, no matter in what form that commitment takes place in, that you go out and fight for opportunity, that you go out and fight for liberty, and you go out and fight for justice, because the world depends on those of us who've had great opportunities to stand tall in these times of great challenge and controversy. So I congratulate you, and I thank you for listening to me for just these few minutes, and God bless you. Thank you so much, Terrence. Our student speaker is chosen by his or her peers. Representing our student body today is Trey Baker. Trey is a native of the beautiful city of Grenada, Mississippi, and is the son of Edner P. Baker and the late Mr. John Lewis Baker, Jr. Trey received his Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science Magna Cum Laude from Tougaloo College in Jackson, Mississippi. While at Tougaloo, Trey was a presidential scholar, a four-year member of the Tougaloo College Student Government Association, a member of, of Alpha Lambda Delta Honor Society, a congressional intern in the Washington, D.C. office of Congressman Benny G. Thompson, 
a project coordinator for the Mississippi Commission for Volunteer Service, and was initiated into the Gamma Rho chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. Immediately after graduation from Tougaloo College, Trey became a fellow with the Council on Legal Education Opportunity, or CLEO, and enrolled at DU Law. Trey has been very active here at the College of Law as a member of both the AAJ National Trial Advocacy Team and the NIDA Tournament of Champions Trial Team. He has served as a co-president of the University of Denver Chapter of the Black Law Students Association, as well as the Rocky Mountain Region Convention Coordinator for the National Black Law Students Association. He's also been active with the Student Trial Lawyers Association. Trey has also been instrumental in implementing programming as the co-chair of the University of Denver's campus-wide Black History Month celebration in 2008. He's also participated with the University of Denver hockey team as a motivational speaker to its Miracles on Ice summer hockey program for kids in Denver's Bridge program. Trey will become an associate at one of Denver's preeminent litigation firms, Pryor Johnson Carney Carr Nixon, where he has worked as a summer associate for the past two summers. In the long run, however, Trey plans to one day return to the great state of Mississippi and eventually run for governor. He looks forward to receiving fat campaign contributions from all of his successful classmates <laughs> and adoring professors. Please welcome Trey Baker. Good morning. Thank you, Dean Juarez. Um, as many of you know, the dean has a special place in the hearts of this graduating class. Um, his first year at this school was also the first year for our day students graduating in 2009. And as many of you also know, the dean is stepping down to pursue other things um, right as we're graduating here. But what you may not know, and what I was made aware of earlier this morning, is that there's a deeper story behind why the dean is leaving. <laughs> I, I know the dean may not be coming back to academia, but instead he will be pursuing his dreams of becoming a gangster rapper. <laughs> his name will be MC Race Ipsa. So I wish you, Dean Juarez, good luck, and I promise not to download the bootleg copy of your first CD. In addition to the dean, we have an amazing group of people uh, here today, including the faculty and administration from the school. But I'd like to give a special recognition um, to our keynote speaker, Colorado Speaker of the House, Terrence Carroll. When I heard that Mr. Carroll was going to be our speaker, I was very excited. He's a leader in our community and someone that I've looked up to and admired, and I'm honored to be on the stage with him today. But I have to admit, I was a little nervous when thinking about what it was going to be like to be the, the second best speaker at graduation. But um, I shouldn't have worried so much because I'm sure uh, Speaker Carroll will let me know how that feels after this is over. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, I, I'm very appreciative of my classmates who have bestowed on me this honor of, of speaking to you today and essentially providing our closing argument for our time here at the University of Denver. This is an honor that comes with the unenviable task of condensing three or four years into six or seven minutes of humor and reflection and inspiration. With that task, I had to pick and choose very carefully about what I would talk about today. And so I want to talk about three specific days, the only days that really matter in the big picture. Those days are yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Let's start by talking about yesterday. Now, most people would probably say that there's absolutely no reason to look back to yesterday, uh, including a couple of Bush administration officials and the Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> but I, I disagree with that. Yesterday is so important because as we go through life, we have to learn from yesterday to make our today better. I could name a million things about what we've learned in our yesterdays here at the University of Denver including how not to communicate by email and something I call the great coffee debacle of 2007. 
we've also learned about communication with um, the combined efforts of the Career Development Center and the Student Affairs Office. And they've taught us that if you communicate too much, people eventually stop listening. But finally, the, the class of 2009 has learned the most from its professors, the faculty here. From coloring of cases with Lucy Marsh to trying to figure out what Roger's pony had to do with jurisdiction in Ann Scales' class. <laughs> this faculty, this esteemed, hardworking faculty has shown us that if you work hard and put in the time and make excellent grades and are an active person and a strong writer, that maybe you someday can have a job that only requires you to come to work twice a week for an hour at a time. <laughs> but that's our, our yesterday. <laughs> Turning to today. Today, many would argue, is the most important of these three days that I've talked about. And one must live for today and live each day to its fullest. As we from time to time learn throughout life, the concept of living for today is never more prescient than in the shadows of tragedy. I had some lighter material here, but I would be remiss if I failed to dedicate this portion and speak briefly about Professor Eric Blumel. Professor Blumel was a young academic that spent his life and his career serving others. And his tragic passing serves as yet another reminder of how fragile life is and how we must live life to the fullest and how we must commit ourselves to service as he did in his life. As we end this journey, we turn to our tomorrows. And as much as we learn from yesterday and as much as we live for today, we must also hope for tomorrow. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. It's hard to have hope these days. I mean, yeah, it, it's mean in these streets right now. I've heard all the stories. Firms aren't hiring. The firm that hired me is deferring people. The government isn't hiring. Judges can't hire clerks. I got hired, but just got a letter saying they cut my salary in half. In-house counsel won't hire me because you have to have 5,000 years of experience, and I can't get one because nobody's hiring. But my friends, don't fret. Have hope. Not just the hope I have sometimes that I can pay the rent or <laughs> eat, but the hope, in fact, that today we're leaving this arena with one of the most versatile degrees known to man. And if you use this degree, I'm telling you that if you have hope, everything will work itself out. You'll see, in a few months, we can brag about having the most qualified prosecutors and public defenders and civil litigators in the business. And let's not forget about the abundantly qualified yoga instructors and delivery boys. Because I, I have to be serious with you, <laughs> you know, hope isn't gonna help everybody. <laughs> but to, to wrap it up, yesterday, today, and tomorrow are the only three days that, that matter. And if we continue these things that we've started here at our time at the University of Denver, if we continue to learn from our yesterdays and live our todays to their fullest and have hope for our tomorrows, there's nothing that can defeat this group that's sitting in front of me right now. I thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Trey. You'll uh, be getting a complimentary copy of my, uh, my first album, I assure you. It is now my pleasure to invite the University of Denver's 17th Chancellor, Dr. Robert Coombe, to join me for the conferring of degrees. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the privilege of presenting the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Legal Administration. Will the candidates please rise and remain standing?
Chancellor, these candidates have met all of the requirements and are entitled to receive their degrees at this time. You have been recommended as having fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Master of Science in Legal Administration, and the Board of Trustees has authorized me to confer upon you that academic degree which you have earned. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon each of you the degree of Master of Science in Legal Administration and admit you to all the rights, powers, and privileges pertaining thereto, in token whereof I will hand you your diploma. Please be seated. Chancellor, I have the privilege of presenting the candidates for the degree of Master of Resources Law Studies. Will the candidates please rise and remain standing? Chancellor, these candidates have met all of the requirements and are entitled to receive their degrees at this time. You have been recommended as having fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Master of Resources Law Studies, and the Board of Trustees has authorized me to confer upon you that academic degree which you have earned. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon each of you the degree of Master of Resources Law Studies and admit you to all the rights, powers, and privileges pertaining thereto. In token whereof, I will hand you your diploma. Please be seated. Chancellor Coombe, I have the privilege of presenting the candidates for the degree of Master of Laws in Natural Resources and Environmental Law and Policy. Will the candidates please rise and remain standing? Chancellor Coombe, these candidates have met all of the requirements and are entitled to receive their degrees at this time. You have been recommended as having fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Master of Laws in Natural Resources and Environmental Law and Policy. And the Board of Trustees has authorized me to confer upon you that academic degree which you have earned. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon each of you the degree of Master of Laws in Natural Resources and Environmental Law and Policy and admit you to all the rights, powers, and privileges pertaining thereto. In token whereof, I will hand you your diploma. Please be seated. Chancellor Coombe, I would like to present the candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor. Will the candidates please rise and remain standing? Chancellor Coombe, these candidates have met all of the requirements and are entitled to receive their degrees at this time. You have been recommended as having fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Juris Doctor, and the Board of Trustees has authorized me to confer upon you that academic degree which you have earned. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon each of you the degree of Juris Doctor and admit you to all of the rights, powers, and privileges pertaining thereto. In token whereof, I will hand you your diploma. Please be seated. <laughs> Registrar Julie Gordon will read the names of the graduates as they receive their degrees and are hooded. Will those who have been awarded the degree of Master of Science in Legal Administration, Master of Resources Law Studies, Master of Laws in Natural Resources and Environmental Law and Policy, and the degree of Juris Doctor, please rise and proceed as directed by the marshals. After you have received your diplomas, you may return to your seat. Will the audience please refrain from applauding until all graduates have returned to their seats?
Jessica R. Kress. Philip J. Devlin. Heather D. Fasano. Melinda David Larson. Margarita V. Meehan. Sarah A. Al Haroon Iman Abdullah Aman Helena B. Bledsoe Kathleen Marks. Melissa H. Rossiter. Catherine Sachs. Emily L. Smith. Julia F. Verdi. Pedro Camacho Castan. Elizabeth A. Danello. Derek Todd Human. Ryan E. Matthews. Noemi Nunez. Alvaro Ordonez. Marcelo Oliveres. Gabriela Porto Rodriguez. Misty A. Sims. David H. Southworth. Stephen Ziri. Jared Adams. Yes. 
Belen Abura. Kurt W. Allred. Laura M. Almquist. Joshua D. Amos. Rachel D. Anderson. Joshua M. Archambo, Order of St. Ives. Jeffrey S. Armour. John Lewis Baker III, Trey. Lisa Baldwin Gurian. Lee T. Ballman, Order of St. Ives. Stephen E. Baum. Matthew J. Bama. Dustin D. Berger, Order of St. Ives. Tom R. Blackburn, Order of St. Ives. Lisa T. C. Blattner. Mark A. Blackman. Catherine L. Bowman, Order of St. Ives. Edward Forrest. Katie S. Bowers. Casey Brackney. Gary W. Broadcorp II. David M. Brown. Sarah E. Brummett. Alicia M. Buckingham, Order of St. Ives. Jennifer M. Bunch, Order of St. Ives. Blake P. Calloway, Order of St. Ives. Carissa L. Campbell. Darren G. Carr. Jared A. Caza.
Brian D. A. Kaler. Jordan P. Chase, Order of St. Ives. Carolyn H. Childers. Zachary A. Christensen. Anna Christopher. Anna M. Chung. Andrew L. Saganic. Jennifer L. Cogburn. Andrew M. Comer. Miranda S. Compton. Brianna J. Conklin. Matthew C. Cooper. Jessica Peck Corey. Chet C. Cotton. John Z. Corson. Jason A. Crow. Trevor A. Crow. Sean R. Cumberledge. Justin M. Curry. Matthew R. Darden. Justin S. Davis. Elizabeth A. Dawson. John P. Deppi. Joseph R. DeStaffney, Order of St. Ives. Shannon S. Duffy. Gabriel A. Duesenberry. Elizabeth A. English. Anthony W. Epps. Claire Laura Evans. Jefferson L. Exil. Matthew T. Vega. Timothy R. Feeney. Brian Joseph Fisher.
Benjamin T. Figa. Stephanie Fitzgerald. Christopher J. Friends. Amy L. Freerich. Ted W. Friedman. Lena M. Gagnon. William J. Gerheim, Order of St. Ives. Courtney A. Girl. Alice E. Geyer. Ginger L. Giles. Nicole B. Godfrey. Lindsay C. Goldford, Order of St. Ives. Matthew M. Goodrich. George F. Gorman. Allison C. Grabowski. Jed A. Greenblatt. Jessica C. Green. Pamela Greenwood. Charles E. Grell, Order of St. Ives. Joseph W. Grant. Jonathan R. Griffin. Jessica L. Gross. Amanda R. Guile. J. Brian Gwynn. Kelly A. Hall. Dulcinea Z. Hanushak. Sivan Harari. Margaret Herrick Thayer. Brianne C. Hart. Michael J. Hartman. Brandon D. Herbst.
Adam C. Hernandez. Patrick J. Hickey. Jeremy R. Hill. Drew D. Hintz. Paula A. Holt. Christopher S. Hudson. Brianne E. Hebner. Charlene H. Hunter. Crystal D. Hunter. Lauren G. Jekyll, Order of St. Ives. Amanda B. Janulis. Leah M. Jensen. Peter C. Johnson. Brenda L. Jordal. Edward Jordan. Heather E. Joyce. Aaron J. Kalina. Vanessa Kama. William M. Jones. David A. Kaplan. Travis B. Keenan. Laura J. Keller. Christopher S. Kelly. David C. Kelly. Theanne M. Kennebec. <laughs> Catherine A. Kennedy. <laughs> Kevin C. Keyes. Alicia H. Kim. Jenny L. Kingsbury. Melinda J. Clure.
Chelsea M. Cook. Aaron S. Ladd. Matthew S. Larson, Order of St. Ives. Michelle A. Larson Krieg. Mark Allen Loricello. Kimberly Laser. Greg M. LeBoten. Stephanie Michelle Lemon. Robert F. Levine. Jennifer M. Litwack. Kobe A. Lockhead. Valdemar Lopez. Jose F. Lopez. Keenan E. Lorenz. Zachary S. C. Luce. Emily M. Lyons. Ryan B. McDonald. Lisa A. Machetto. Ryan S. Malarkey, Order of St. Ives. Michael D. Mandridge. Elise M. Moranjan. Vaughn C. Marshall. Kelly R. March. Carl Martinek. David P. Mason, Order of St. Ives. Caitlin R. May. Stacy A. McClam. Michael B. McDermott. <laughs> Jeffrey L. McOchran. <laughs> Ma
Michael B. McGuire. Ryan L. McKee. Elizabeth J. Meyer, Order of St. Ives. Elizabeth A. Meyer. Colin B. Mielke. Ryan Miller. Adam C. Mitchell. Amanda Faye Mitchell Diaz. Scott R. Moorhead. Sheena M. Moran, Order of St. Ives. Lauren E. Moss. Nicole M. Munt. Carl Chadwell Murley. Brennan J. Murray. Camila Nieder. Liza K. Negriff. Joseph M. Nofi. Carrie G. Noonan. Scott C. Nuzman. Timoteo O. Aquande. Conrad R. W. Osa. Jennifer M. Osler. Jaime V. Papa. Zomaira E. Paredes. Krishma C. Parsad. <laughs> Jeffrey M. Patnode. <laughs> Jacob W. Paul. <laughs> Sunika Pavar. Micah R. Payton. John T. Purcell. Kari S. Peters.
Amelia E. Piggott. Forrest V. Plesko. Paige M. Ponsford. Aaron R. Powell. Sarah Ann Quinn. Sal C. Quintana. Richard Townsend Rabner III. Helen J. Ratterman, Order of St. Ives. Nicole Renee Reckless. Mark L. Reeves. Allison Ruth Heaster Rich. Kelly M. Ryder. Claire E. Regelman. Jonathan A. Rogers. Hannah B. Ross. Rebecca A. Ross. Spencer B. Ross, Order of St. Ives. Heather Rutherford. Anne K. Rutschow. Jordan J. Sagel. Mark Schaefer. Robin M. Shepherdjohn. Jacob J. Schlesinger, Order of St. Ives. Stephanie L. Schoenwald. Daniel T. Seidel. Abigail Serna. Raj A. Shah. Matthew Schechter. James M. Shine. Travis J. Sides. Nicole T. Skaggs. Heather L. Skrypek. Marin Skulberstad. Gail J. Smith.
Daniel Sean Smith. Zachary G. Smith. Mark S. Solomon. Allison C. Sorkin. Claire F. Soto. Catherine S. Spear, Order of St. Ives. Carrie E. Stanley, Order of St. Ives. Woo! Melissa R. Stasco. Stacy D. Stein. Alex R. Steiner. Eric H. Stevens. Todd N. Stoneman. Nathan T. Swanson. Christy L. Swap. R. Clay Taylor. Nicholas W. Temming. Clint A. Thatcher. Pamela B. Thomas. Jonathan M. Thompson, Order of St. Ives. Matthew S. Thompson. Michael F. Thompson. Karen K. Thompson. Paul D. Tigan. Brett R. Tobin. Brandy K. M. Toilupe. Patrick R. Tolly. Priscilla Tomescu. Don J. Toussaint. Amber C. Terzinski. Joe Van Landingham, Order of St. Ives. Tanner J. Walls. Kim Walsh. Michael Warder. Andrew J. Waters, Order of St. Ives. Yeah. 
Aaron B. Watts. Michael A. Watts. Patterson S. Weaver. Monique A. Westfall. Michael N. Whitney. Douglas C. Wigley. Trocon E. Williams. Catherine L. Williams Shuck, Order of St. Ives. Matthew J. Wilson. Jennifer L. Wilt. Clayton E. Wire. Paul L. Zelnick. Tan A. John. Congratulations, graduates. <laughs> I now invite all of the graduates to rise and join me in applauding your families and friends who have given you their support during your time in law school. We are all very proud. <laughs> we really are. We are so proud of all of you and of your accomplishments. Each of you has a role to play in building public confidence in the legal profession by demonstrating wisdom, personal integrity, good judgment, and fair and honest treatment of others. We know you will meet this challenge <clears throat> Excuse me. on behalf of the University of Denver Sturm College of Law. Congratulations to all of the graduates and to their families. This, this concludes our commencement ceremony. After the graduates have proceeded out of the arena, 
please join us for a reception in their honor in the Ricketson Law Building Forum and the Campus Green to the west of our building. Thank you. 